So I've been doing a lot of reflecting lately and something that comes up over and over again is the fact that most guys just can't hold on to the money they make. And bro, I can keep hitting you over the head with statistics and facts about how most guys just don't have the discipline to save money and how they let their desires of instant gratification get the best of them. And I can relate that back to my own experiences all day long. But you won't truly understand the passion behind what I'm saying until you understand the deeper reasons behind why you're having such a hard time saving money. What's up, man? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. On this channel, I talk about saving money, getting out of debt, various personal growth topics, increasing your income, and I relate all these things back to my own personal experiences to serve as a motivation to you. Let's get into the video. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. Your money struggles started at birth. Usually, whatever your parents believe about money become your own beliefs. And it's because of the pure fact that you're exposed to those beliefs on a consistent basis because you live with your parents. You grow up seeing how your parents handle money and you grow up overhearing discussions about financial struggles that your parents are going through. And if you're like me, you grew up hearing, that's expensive, I'm gonna put it on my credit card. So now you grow up seeing the new cars and the new entertainment systems, but when you ask your parents to stop by McDonald's on the way back home, you get a response like, we got food at the house. Or my favorite, you got McDonald's money? So as much as you can relate to that, without realizing it, you're influenced by that way of thinking. So now, on a subconscious level, you're thinking it's okay to spend money that you don't have on a new flat screen 65 inch TV for the living room, but when it comes to food, that's when it's time to be frugal and act like you're financially responsible. Tell me I'm wrong, bro. So you add that way of thinking on top of a number of self-limiting financial beliefs that you're exposed to on a regular basis, and that's exactly why you have a hard time saving money. And when I say self-limiting financial beliefs, this is exactly what I mean. I don't make that much money to save, so I'm gonna need a raise. That's a self-limiting financial belief. It's too late for me to start saving money. Like Even if I start right now, I will never be able to catch up. That's a self-limiting financial belief. I have way too much debt and I have too many bills to get financially ahead. Guess what? Self-limiting financial belief. You gotta think, man, you're exposed to these self-limiting beliefs in more than one ways. Not only do you hear them, but you also see them in action. And when you develop and build such strong beliefs, you act on and live by these beliefs. And because these are self-limiting beliefs that we're talking about, you are now functioning in a way that restricts the amount of money that you can save and the amount of money that you can attract into your life. Let me ask you something, bro. How do you think I know about this? I experienced it. And what I experienced followed me into my early adult life. And whenever I'd see a new pair of shoes or a new video game, I would run to go get it and I would work to get the money. And then as soon as I got the money, I would spend the money on it. And then boom, I would barely have any money left over. Facts. So speaking of which, let's talk about the action behind the self-limiting beliefs. So your friends and family members that you've been around for so long, they tell themselves things like, I'm in too much debt to get ahead with saving money. But then in the same breath, they say that life is short and that money is meant to be spent. So then those two sets of beliefs causes them to operate in such a way that makes them swipe their credit card on something that they can't afford, which then puts them further into debt, which reinforces their first thought, which says, I'm in too much debt to save money. In other words, I'm giving up on saving money because it's too late for me to start saving money anyways, because it's so much easier for me to acknowledge the fact that life is short and it's easier for me to spend money than to save money. And because there's no immediate impact on my lifestyle, I'll continue to swipe credit cards whether or not I have the money because all I have to do is make a small payment every single month to avoid late fees. Not even realizing that the minimum payment is not gonna cut it and that credit card is gaining interest on interest on interest, which is exactly why you feel like you're in so much debt that you can't save. That mentality follows you and pours into other areas of your life, like discipline, like willpower. Bro, if you grew up in that type of environment where people around you think like that, you're telling me you weren't influenced somewhat by that? Come on, bro, you know this information I'm giving you is cold? But I'll tell you what isn't cold. Realizing that you have a hard time saving money, but not having a single idea why. Because guess what? 
it goes even deeper than what I was just talking about just now. Just like I discussed in my last video, saving money and having a frugal lifestyle, they're great, they're awesome. But the fastest way to save money is by increasing your income. And when you have the belief that the only way you can make extra money is by getting a raise or working overtime, you give all that power to your job. And you limit your own powers to create your own value to create your own income on your own terms. And now you're putting yourself in a situation where you're working yourself into a burnout because you're working too much overtime or you're waiting not so patiently for a raise instead of pursuing a side hustle. And think about this, bro. What are you going to do when they cut overtime? That's not cold, bro. You already know my stance on this, bro. Ain't no waiting for a raise. I will and have created my own value in as many extra streams of income as possible. Because why should I have to wait on anybody for me to reach my financial goals? That makes no sense. And on the other hand, some guys actually think they're worth less than what they're getting paid. Right, right. You heard me right. Less than what they're getting paid. Bro, I will never forget the time where me and a good friend of mine, we first started getting our first few job offers when we were in college, and I will never forget this day. He got an offer that was $60,000 a year, and he looked at it, and he was like, oh my gosh, like, really? I, I feel bad for accepting this. Th this is too much. He looked at the hiring manager dead in the face and said, this is too much, with a straight face, bro. And so then the hiring manager matched his energy. He was like, all right, well, tell you what, I can make it lower if you want me to with a straight face, bro. So, so my friend's belief that he didn't have the skills or the talent or the education to be deserving of such a salary almost costed him. Can you imagine having such strong self-limiting financial beliefs that you talk yourself out of money? It happens every day, bro. Facts. And it's that same mentality that yields this mentality. It's not asking your boss for a raise because you just know that your boss is gonna tell you no. Tell me I'm wrong. It's just like backing out of negotiating your salary for a job that you just got hired for because you're afraid of losing out on the opportunity if you ask for more money. Which basically reinforces the self-limiting belief that it's not worth it for me to ask for more money, which is another way of saying, I don't know my worth and I'm not willing to test the waters to see if anyone else knows my worth. You see, this is way deeper than personal finance. This pours into your resilience, your mindset, your unwillingness to settle, whether or not you challenge things that you don't agree with, even your character. And it's qualities like those that pour directly into whatever money habits you have. And that determines whether you're cold with your money or if you're struggling. Facts. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.